hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is faith and today guys i'll be checking out this video that is titled if i were president i would definitely make this illegal and this is by matt wash and you guys i'm excited for this if you're here to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about i've ruled on this issue already in the past but it it seems necessary for me to speak up again because it is shocking to me how many people are wrong about this how many people don't understand one of one of the basic rules of etiquette and of life. So here's a quick viral video making the rounds right now. Uh, it is an argument on an airplane over the issue of reclining your seat. Let's watch. The whole trip, she pushed my seat. You no, seen you it. seen it. No, she did. She put, no. I'm allowed to put my seat back. I'm allowed to put my seat back. I'm allowed to put my seat back. Okay. So I, I don't know where this video is from, but it's making the rounds right now. I don't know if it's recent or not. I don't know the, any other context behind it. I don't know who those people are. But I think we can, uh, we can, we can assume from the context that, it's, that, that, that this dispute uh, started because the woman was putting her seat back and the guy uh, behind her did not like that. And apparently from what I read, she, he was kicking the seat or something. Um, and so it is apparently necessary, as I did on Twitter this morning, uh, it's apparently necessary for me to uh, stipulate, once again, you do not recline your seat in coach, okay? If you want the right to recline your seat, get a first-class ticket. You can recline your seat in first class, okay, because there's enough room, and, and you can recline your seat without impeding the person behind you. Exactly. Um, and, uh, it, and, and also there are practice, like in first class, for example, the tray table most of the time is not attached to the seat in front of you. Usually in first class, they have the tray table that comes out of the armrest, which means that if a person behind you reclines a bit, it's not going, and you're trying to eat uh, your, your uh, meal on your tray table, it's not going to interfere. But in coach, the tray table is attached to the seat behind you. And so oftentimes if you have, if you have a tray table down and the person reclines, the tray table is not even usable anymore. Can't use it. And then there's and then uh, there's the the uh, the the leg room issue. Okay, um, you only have you, you have like two inches of leg room to spare if you're in coach. Mm -hmm. You have barely any barely any leg room to begin with. You got maybe two inches to spare. And when I say to spare, I mean like. There's, you, you might, if, if you are, and it, yeah, look, if you're, if you're a very short person, this might be different. But if you are even average height or a slightly above average height, um, you've got where your knee ends and then you've got maybe like two inches before it's hitting the, the seat in front of you. If that person declines, that room is gone now. Mm -hmm. And now you, your knee is wedged up against that person's reclined seat. Imagine. Just because, and I don't want to hear, well, I'm a, as she's arguing, I'm allowed to recline my seat. I'm allowed. Yeah, you're allowed to. You're allowed. There's no, unfortunately, there's no law saying you can't. There should be a law, but there's not. You're, you're allowed to do a lot of things that you should, you still shouldn't do. Mm. That's what etiquette is. is that there is not force of law behind most rules of etiquette. Again, if I was in charge, then it would be, but I'm not, unfortunately for everybody. So, but that doesn't, that doesn't invalidate the rule of etiquette. There's no, hey, you're allowed to walk in, to walk through a door and shut it on the person behind you. You're allowed to do that. The door is, you, you're, you're able to do that. Does that mean you should do that? Does that make it not incredibly rude to do that? It is. You know, here's another analogy. For all the people that say, well, the seats, uh, the seats can recline. Like, are, is that, is, is that how s simple your mind is that you say, well, it can do it. So that means I should do it. Yeah, it can do it, but you shouldn't. Just like the vol, uh, take this. Maybe you live in an apartment. Okay. You have a TV. You're allowed to have a TV in your apartment. That TV goes up to a certain volume. 
right? It goes up to volume 75 or whatever. So you're allowed to have a TV. You're allowed to be in your apartment. The TV is, is you're able to turn it all the way up. It has that capability. But should you put the TV on full blast so that you're disturbing the people who live around you? No. no. Even though you can, even though uh, you're able to, you still shouldn't because it is rude to the people around you. Exactly. And when you decide to recline your seat and coach, you are making the decision to invade the personal space of the person behind you and to take what little comfort they had mm -hmm. away from them. Because of your okay? And you're doing, a, you're trying to increase your comfort by a little bit uh, by it's taking uh, the, the, the comfort away from the person behind you. That is, by definition, a, a rude thing to do. Selfish. All right. Uh, moving on. Actually, we're not going to move on because as we move on to uh, the next segment, it will we, we will stay on this very important subject. Let's get to that now. Okay, so as I mentioned, we uh, talked about this. Or I, I, uh, I, I want to say I gave my opinion on the leg room uh, or, or the seat reclining issue. I didn't give my opinion. I stated what is a fact on Twitter this morning. And uh, shockingly, a large percentage of people somehow are disagreeing with me. So I'll read a few of these comments. Um, she's right, Matt. The reclining function is there to be used. You decide or need to fly. Bear with it. That doesn't entitle the person behind you to push and kick the seat in front. Abby says, seats recline a tiny amount. It's hardly noticeable to either party. Smooth Op says, I'm putting my back. It is what it is. I've paid for that seat and all the amenities that come with it. Dr. Dre, I don't know if he's the, the one and only, says, disagree, it only reclines about an inch and the back table is still usable. Kara says, these seats are designed to be the smallest possible to maximize airline profits. Why does logic always elude you, Matt? And Aaron says, the seats only recline a couple of inches, stopping a drama queen. Fly first class if you really care about legroom that much. Okay, number one, I do fly first class. This is me. I'm speaking up. Uh, for the common man here, okay, I'm speaking. So I'm not even personally affected by this anymore. But but even so, I still it it enrages me to know that the people back there are suffering in this way. I almost want to give my seat up for them. I, well, no, I would never do that. But still, I, I don't like to know that this kind of that this rudeness is happening, and also because of the rudeness that this great suffering is happening as well. Um, it only reclines a couple of inches. That's true, but once again, there, there is only a couple of inches back there to spare to begin with. And so you're taking away what, what rightfully belongs to the person behind you. Now, who's the ultimate villain in all of this? Is it the airline? Yes, I totally agree with that. Okay, the airlines, they, they're treating their, their passengers like cattle, basically, just shoving them back there. And, uh, and then on top of it, they have the recline function on the seats, which is insane. Like, why do you even have, why are the seats able to do that? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Where is no? no. Um, so they are to blame ultimately for this. But um, look, we get into the plane, especially if we're sitting back in coach. You know, as they said during COVID, we're all in this together. And, uh, and we should have a lot more room. We don't. We shouldn't be treated like cattle, but we are. And so we all just need to, you know, we just got to work together a little bit, okay? You don't, very, you don't very often hear me with the kind of kumbaya message, but this is one of those times. And, and usually when you see these incidents on planes, it's, our, it's, our, it's a high-stress situation. Traveling is high-stress. People are, their nerves are, are already frayed. And, uh, and so you just got to, just like basic etiquette, basic politeness, um, be considerate to the people around you in just real basic, small ways. Uh, and there's all, you know, if there's someone on the plane that's not cooperating with that program, it just all hell breaks loose. So that's it. This should be the last time that we have to talk about this. The rule has been stated again. You guys, that was such an interesting one. I always love to listen to Matt Walsh talk because this man is loaded with lots of advice and beautiful things to say and he knows how to scold someone when they go wrong about the young lady that was shouting on the plane 
I think she was a bit too selfish because like Matt West said, if she wanted to have her chairs decline, then she should go for first class because you cannot inconvenience the person that is sitting behind you just for you to have more room to be comfortable let me know what your thoughts are about this video do you think that the young lady was right or the guy behind her was at fault for objecting that she shouldn't decline her chair let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section i really enjoyed every minute of this video if you guys totally enjoyed watching give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys